schedule, but um, we promise this will be the best presentation in the night, so you get your time. Well spent. <laughs> Setting the expectation. Okay. So, um, I'm Ben Kirby. I'm Colin Moore. I'm David Green. And I am Raghu Vermont. Okay, so today we are presenting our senior capstone project where we were given the grand engineering challenge of restoring and improving urban infrastructure. So when we're talking about improving infrastructure, our first question that comes up is what is infrastructure? Infrastructure is a combination of fundamental systems that support a community, region, or country. This ranges from everything from water to sewer systems, rail to road to rail networks, and national power to natural gas grids. It is no secret that along with other countries, America's infrastructure is starting to crumble and fall apart somewhat. So, um, engineers of our century, the 21st century, face a formidable challenge of basically modernizing our fundamental systems so they can continue to support our civilization. Okay. So, think about all the Raleigh area has to offer. In 2015 alone, nearly 10 million people traveled through the RDU airport located in Morrisville. And that number is only increasing. In fact, Raleigh is ranked number nine by Forbes as one of the fastest growing cities in the nation. And not only that, the population increased from 22,000 people in 1990 to around 430,000 people in 2013. So you're looking at a double in around two and a half decades. So not only is there a population increase? You're also looking at RTP, which is one of the main reasons for the population increase. So RTP has 200 different large-scale companies, as well as 50,000 highly skilled employees that work there. Okay. Next one. Stated before, 10 million people travel. As stated before, 10 million people travel through our um, RTU airport in Morrisville. So as that number increases, the options for our transits remain stagnant. Of course, Raleigh has systems that are already in place, such as taxi systems, paid parking lots, and rental car systems. But I'm sure, as y'all are all aware, these systems are probably more than what you're willing to pay for, or cost more than what you're willing to pay for. So that's not even mentioning the fact that Raleigh has a severe traffic problem. So uh, I know some people here might work at RTP or travel down I-40 on a regular basis. Uh, if you do, then you that site right there on, or any of these pictures is not a strange site. You see traffic all the time in Raleigh, especially on the Beltline and I-40. Uh, so the population is growing in Raleigh, it's no secret, and um, soon it's going to be too much for these highways to maintain. And we want to fix this problem. We don't want to just continuously update the highways that are in place. I know the South Beltline is probably one of my least favorite roads to, ride, to drive on. Uh, there's, it seems like there's always construction going on there, and they're always expanding the roads because too many people. So what we propose to put Raleigh back on track to becoming one of the most innovative cities in the country is a light rail system. Now this light rail system will be called the RDC system, Raleigh, du Raleigh Durham Community System, and it will travel people all the way from downtown Raleigh through RTP and up into downtown Durham. Alright, so our route, we start off start off uh, with the Raleigh Red Line, which is uh, 16 miles long, about 25 minutes end to end. It has uh, four trains, it will come about every 10 to 15 minutes, and there are six stations. So we start off in the RDU, or uh, downtown Raleigh station. Uh, here we'll have a four-story park and ride garage, uh, and then there will also be access to the uh, uh, Go Raleigh uh, bus system, including the uh, R line. So next we have the uh, NC State campus station. It's kind of hard to see behind the trees, but uh, there will be um, students can have access to everywhere around the Triangle, like Durham, uh, Raleigh, uh, PNC Arena. And then uh, it's good for out-of-state students because if they fly in, um, they'll be able to just fly in RDU, hop on the train, and then at the NC State. We'll also uh, include a student discount, uh, which will be good for NC State students. Uh, here is the PNC and Carter Finley station, uh, providing access for Canes games and concerts, uh, Wolfpack. Um, next, we have the SAS campus station. I don't know why I did that, but uh, 
SAS has about 13,660 employees. So it's a large company and having a station here would be, would be huge. Uh, next we have uh, RDU International Airport Station. Here we would include like a, a bus hub area uh, and we'll include shuttles that would take you to the different terminals. And this is uh, the last stop of the, uh, the line. It's the RTP Union Station. This is the heart and soul of the project. Um, as you can see, both rail lines come through here, as well as the uh, commuter bus system that I'll talk about later. So next we have the Durham Blue Rail, which is uh, about eight and a half miles long. It's about 10 to 15 minutes end to end. And there are four stations, and we'll have um, two, or two trains that will come every 10 to 15 minutes. So we start off in the Durham station. Here, uh, there's already a proposed Durham Orange County light rail system. It's proposed, I don't believe it's under construction yet, but it basically goes from UNC Chapel Hill um, to Duke to downtown Durham, and then it ends up right here. They're having a, a park and ride a garage there, so we'll be able to just connect with our, our route and go from there. Uh, next is the NC uh, Central Campus Station. Um, similar to NC State, we would provide like a student discount or something. And there's also Triangle Transit uh, uh, bus, bus stations there that will give you right down to the campus. And then next we have a Durham Park and Ride area for the surrounding neighborhoods. And then it filters back into the RTP Union Station. As I said before, it's like the heart and soul of the project. So in order to save uh, money, we decided to do a park and ride, uh, park and ride bus system for the, uh, uh, as you can see in the green, for the like Apex, Cary, Morrisville, Holly, Holly Springs. Um, this will be uh, we're utilizing Triangle Expressway, which isn't really used maybe as much as uh, the government had hoped. So uh, we'll be utilizing that uh, starting down in Holly Springs. The park and ride system there, uh, Apex, Cary, and Morrisville, and then it filters back into the RTP Union Station. Can I ask, because there's not too many jobs available down there, right? Why are you including those areas? Well, actually, those uh, places down there are developing very, they're arguably developing faster than the Raleigh area. Uh, and I mean, I know I live in Holly Springs, I know like right around my where I live down there, there it's insane how much it's developed just in the time that I've been living there. Um, we expect this to grow even more and having that drive, especially down there we have the bus systems mainly so that uh, people that live down there, because a lot of that is residential area, so we have that so that people can park there and not have to worry about traffic if they have like a commute all the way down from like up to Raleigh and from Long Springs. So it's more about bringing in from population centers right. to yes. work it's than residential yes. area bringing them to the... Uh, right. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Um, is there already like right away for for the uh, lines? What do you mean? Well, where are you going to lay the lines? Do you yes. have right away to go passage there, to go? There would be areas where you have to clear, but I, yeah, there, um, I picked out a route where it would oh. be able to work. So what is the time, like, you know, from suppose from NC State campus to the RDU airport, what is the time frame you're looking at? Because although the, it, there's a lot of traffic in the area, it's still not every time of the day, and if you have a train, right. it has to be moving the entire day. It cannot be mm -hmm. like, you know, so what is the time and what is the motivation that, you know, like people are going to use it? No, what, how, how, how long does it take? How fast? Yeah. Um, well, for the, the Raleigh line, it was uh, 30, 20 minutes, and then, okay. so um, it, that'd probably be like, I mean, because they're right, oh, the two stations are right next to each other, so it, it would be quick. Okay. Yeah, these trains are very fast. Yeah, they're yeah. Yeah. Right. So office, that office. has to be a, you know... Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense, yeah. All right, so something that I, I have here is um, we have six stations along the line all the way from Durham to Raleigh that are kind of standard stations, like the one at PNC Arena or the one at NC State. This is a model of half of one. The other half would be pretty much the same exact thing, except flipped around so that it's accessible from both sides. Um, this model is 100 feet long. The whole station will be 200 feet long. The trains, this is the size of one of the trains, 85 feet long. We have two cars for a train. Well, 
the cars are 85 feet long, but the whole train would be 170 feet, and it would fit in here really well. Um, with this station, we have a uh, ticket booth where, or machines where you can go and you can get your tickets. You can order them online or on site. You can uh, have the one-way tickets, two-way tickets, daily passes, weekly, monthly, yearly, etc. And we would, and obviously we would also have uh, we would try to get student discounts for people that go to the NC Central or NC State or maybe. So apart from the standard station that I've been just described, there are three unique stations. The first one being downtown Raleigh. As I said before, it's a, there's a four-story parking garage. The next one is the RDU station. Um, the next one's the RDU station. There's a, a bus loop for the shuttles, um, which would take you to all the terminals in RDU. And the, next, uh, the final one is the RTP Union station. This has everything. We have rail car and bus maintenance, a cafe for morning coffee. Uh, there's a triangle transit bus hub. We include triangle transit and then our commuter bus bus hub. So these are the uh, this is the train that we're going to be using. It's the Hyundai Rodan Silverliner 5. It's used by uh, Philadelphia's SEPTA commuter rail system and Denver's RTD commuter system. So. It's already in use, it works great. It goes up to 100 miles per hour. Uh, it's a length of 85 feet and 109 people can fit on it. We'll be using a, uh, a married pairs car, or married pair car. Uh, that'd be about 170 feet and would uh, fit 218 people. Two bicycles can fit um, on each car and it is handicap accessible as you can see right there in the top picture. So then we have the Daimler Orion 7 diesel electric hybrid bus. We would be using eight of these for that commuter uh, bus route, the, the green one, and then we'd be using four of them for the shuttles at RDU. It seats 44 people, two wheelchair positions. So 40 feet long, six cylinder, 5.9 liter clean diesel engine. Now we come to the biggest question of them all. Who would, why would anybody want to use this? Well, using this system, we would be able to allow customers to save not only time, money, but also help contribute to the environment. Saving time. As you have seen and probably experienced, I-40 is packed, especially during rush hour, where the speed of normal cars can slow to about 10 miles per hour or even stop entirely if it gets really bad. So the trains would allow passengers to travel quickly between stations during rush hour as well as um, without, as well as during normal times that are not high tra traffic time. And as well as to this, it would allow more people to ride at a time, meaning that their throughput would be faster than a standard highway. Saving money. As we all know, gas prices have been fluctuating over the past few years, and eventually they're going to get high enough that people will not be able to afford them. And using this system, we would allow them to not have to pay for gas prices, which can eat up a bill, especially if you have to travel or not. Um, and the last point, saving the environment. With using our trains, which are electric, um, we don't contribute to the environment as much as, say, a um, gas-burning car because the more, because not only are we as more are more people using the same system, but if you, the way a coal power plant works, it enables to generate more electricity and produce lesser pollutants per person than a, than a standard all right so one question that I, I know that we're probably going to get is how much is going to cost mm -hmm. so we went on and after the project we went through pretty much everything that we could think of that goes into this project all the way down to the concrete that's used in the stations and uh, it came out to be a little over a billion dollars which that might seem like a lot but when looking at the other projects around the country it's not uh, that's actually not nearly as expensive. 
All right, so we'd like to take this time to ask any, or to answer any questions that some of you guys might have. I would say with a billion dollars estimated cost, would you plan to solicit federal <coughs> dollars for that? State, local, where does that so, money come from? I looked at that, I looked at that as well. And um, I looked at how much it would cost uh, an average taxpayer if we looked at local, like just Raleigh, and that was insane. I didn't want it. That's like, it's ridiculous. Uh, it was like tens of thousands of dollars per person, so I didn't want to do that. I looked at the state, and that was a lot more reasonable. It was along the lines of maybe like twenty dollars per person per year for like twenty years or so, additionally. But that's a, uh, I mean, that's looking at a flat tax rate. That's not looking at the the progressive tax rate that we do have in this, well, in the country. It's different, but. Um, so we don't necessarily know exactly how to pay for it right now. That's something that, uh, I mean, whether this is a private private thing or a government run or our system, I mean, that would change. But have, 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 what cities have done this recently? How does this compare So I know Charlotte, Charlotte uh, okay. has done a lot. Um, right now they're still working on theirs. I know they're connecting the one that they have in uptown Charlotte to okay. UNC Charlotte. So the costs are kind of the... Actually, this is like, a lot less this expensive. Like one point Six billion for that, just that extension. Yeah. What, what, what was the original? Was that their original no, estimate? No, we just couldn't find the original cost for it, but we found okay. that uh, the extension to bring it from Upper okay. Charlotte to UNC Charlotte was almost double okay. the cost of the whole system. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Um, have you had a chance to show this to anyone from the Department of Transportation? We have not. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I honestly think this is a really good idea, and it should be something that we should do other than outside of school. Yes, sir. So, uh, success of this ride rail system is, is certainly based on uh, high volume of riders. You right. only be transferring yes. around. So, have you have you guys considered a uh, the marketing plan to promote? This light rail system, so because so that riders are excited when it's made available. Yeah, we have, and uh, as David said earlier, we we looked at some of the incentives for using it. You know, you save gas, you save money, you save time, you uh, help contribute to the, saving the environment. Um, we'd have to look at ways to market that to the public, like like billboards and other things like that. But, um, I mean, we we really think that this is something that uh, the people in Raleigh should we, we should recognize that we're a growing city that needs to, I think, catch up with the, I mean, at least Charlotte. Has this, has this come up, I seem to remember, has this come up before in the Raleigh, yes, Durian yes. area? Do you know what the, because the, cause it, it didn't end, end up taking off, do you know what the... Yeah, the, I don't know, like, what this, about what all, what well, happened with what it, happened I know that this has been something that people have considered for a really long time. I actually looked at something that you uh, had uh, published, though, was probably was a while back, but this is where we got our idea. Actually, was uh, I know that I saw a website and it said it was it was yours, and, um, <laughs> and it had a really a really uh, intricate um, kind of map for how it would work if we had a rail system throughout Raleigh, and it, we put that into consideration. We figured what would be the best way to develop the city in an infrastructure standpoint. This is partially elevated. Um, actually, around. there will be a few parts like yeah. elevated over the. But well, you're right on the Street, right? Yeah, there, uh, so, yeah, yeah. It, it was near it. There, there are already some train tracks um, around, like around NC State and stuff. But then, like over towards RDU, we would have to like uh, elevate it over uh, I-40 or something like that, or over some other. And does your plan right now have more, than, <clears throat> more than just one? Car oh, run yeah. back to we have uh, four trains on okay. the Raleigh one and two on the two truck. And we two have trucks. like multiple, so then we can save uh, money. We can have more running at, at during rush hour times, like uh, seven to nine in the morning and four to six and at night, so then uh, we don't have to run all of them all at the same time. And the same goes for the buses as well. Before we wrap up, we'd like to uh, say thank you to our mentors uh, that listen up there, everybody. We tried to look at everybody that helped us even in the slightest way. Um, and again, thank you guys so much for coming out. I know that it's late, but uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, very well. Thank you.